find nothing to do to praise this evening. So. Let us pray. Almighty God, as we gather together to mark the end of one mayoral year and the start of another, we thank you for Richard and for the work that he's put in over the last 12 months. We ask that you bless and guide him in his future endeavours. And as we look to David's turn as mayor, we ask for your blessing on him, on all the activities that he undertakes and the activities that this council undertakes. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Right, good evening everybody, we're going to make a start and thank you everybody for coming this evening. Um, just <clears throat> please be aware this event is being live streamed and please as always be polite and respectful to others during the meeting and you have been all year so thank you, it's made my job ever so easily so I appreciate that to each and every one of you, thank you. Right, so right, next item on the agenda is apologies for absence, do we have any apologies for absence this evening? Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I have apologies for absence from Councillor Fletcher, uh, Councillor Ali Haberton, and also delighted uh, that she's not with us, Stephanie Terry, delighted to tell you that Stephanie just had a little boring. I think it'd be hopeless. Oh. 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 Definitely. Can you pass that on from all of us? And if, if people that's not here is a little bit poorly, will you give them our best as well? Absence, yes. <laughs> no, that's definitely a good reason to not be here into having a baby. Wow. Um, so, okay, next item is declarations of interest. Does anyone have any of those for this evening? <coughs> no one's interested in this evening. Okay. Right. Thank you. Okay, minutes of the last meeting. Um, do we have someone to propose those? Mr. Mayor, I propose that the minutes of the meeting have on the 13th of, of April be accepted as a true and correct record. Thank you. And no, do we have a second? that, Mr. Mayor. Okay, all those in favour? Yeah. Any against? Or any abstentions? Okay. Right. Minutes are carried. Thank you, everybody. So the next item on the agenda. Crikey. My speech. Right. Oh, God. Okay, here we go. All right, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, those watching on the live stream, Officers and fellow councillors, I can't believe how fast my term of office has passed, but I've had so much fun. I would like to thank my mum Linda, my daughter Danny for supporting me throughout my term and joining me on many occasions as the Mayor's Consort. Thanks to my wife Donna, who has been a great Mayoress or Consort or whatever words we decided to use in the taxi on the way down. Um, and she's supported me as always. She's put up with me, coming and going at all times and put up with my flawed drobe over the past year. But then again, that's probably the past 20 years. So I promise her I'll sort that out after today. I probably won't. All right. I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for the help and support 
of Councillor David Grindle. Not only has he been an excellent Deputy Mayor, but also a great friend. And alongside Pip Allen Davis, who has served as the Deputy Mayoress, consort, they have both stepped up to represent us as and when needed, and a big, th big thank you to both of you. I would also like to thank those who nominated me for Mayor, but also those who kindly voted to support this as well. Being the Mayor is being part of a team, and the team is absolutely amazing. I would like to thank Anna, Paula and Chris, the Democratic Services and the Legal Officers, as well as the other Council Officers who do the hard work in the background. I must also thank the drivers who have taken me to the civic engagements, and I would like to say a special thank you to Godfrey. More than a driver, more like a chauffeur. Always turning up in plenty of time, and not once have we been late to any engagement. The car is always immaculate. We've all been treated with the most respect, and I'm now going to have to get used to the people not opening car doors for me again. I would like to thank Martin, Chris, Robert and Pete for helping and supporting me, and I would like to thank Bev, Lorraine and Austin for the phone calls to check I'm okay. It really is appreciated. I would also like to thank the many people who have joined me as the Mayor's Consort. We have had a total of 211 civic engagements. We have met some amazing groups, organisations and individuals. We have attended three wedding anniversaries and several funerals, presented three grant aid checks and presented birthday cards to people who have reached the age of 100. Presented baskets of flowers, cut many ribbons, gave many speeches and raised many flags planted trees and flowers, opened the Tom Martin House, and more recently opened the former police station as the new business hub. I have had happy times and laughed a lot, and I've had sad times and cried too. On many occasions, I have been asked what has been my favourite thing as the Mayor, and that is an easy one. I have been seeing who has joined me on the civic engagements and joined themselves, have we been around the great border and beyond. Over the course of my term of office, we have raised a massive £5,710.97, which will go a long way to help and support the great work that takes place at Broxdale Youth Homelessness. Um, two, two bike rides took place, and thanks to Brinsley, Eastwood and Kimberley Councils for helping to promote the events. Everyone had a great time, and luckily only two poor people saw me fall off my bike on the way home last week when I nearly fell in the canal. <laughs> a great evening at Oliver's in Eastwood where we had lots of fun and thank you to those who came to what turned out to be an amazing evening we also have one more event which, is planned to which was planned to take place last night but had to be moved back to the 7th of July so we will have some more money coming in following the event in the very near future the Mayor's Christmas appeal I am told we received over 3.5 tonnes of food which was collected and shared with various food banks across Broxton Borough and that's thank you to the schools for the kind and generous donations. And thank you to all those who made donations in the trolleys in the council reception. It, is, it has been good dressing up and wearing many hats. And when Graham Harvey was the mayor, I always remember how smart he looked in a hat. And, and he's always been my inspiration for wearing a hat. I hope I have served the people, this council and the councillors of the borough well, and done you all proud. So to wrap up, we have had a great year, and if the next mayor has half as much fun as I have, then he's in for a great time. Broxton Borough is a great place to live, work and play, and I've seen the best of this in my term of office. Thank you all for giving me a great opportunity. Councillor Hamilton. It's no need to sound so, um, so nervous, Mr mm, Mayor. We'll see you in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> um, That's my really, Sorry. really, um, thank you for, you know, on behalf of all of us, I think, for, uh, for all of your efforts over the last year. I think it's fair to say that you've been a mayor like no other. It's certainly fair to say that no other mayor has such a golden smile. <laughs> um, but... Uh, and, and honestly, I know what a lot of people were thinking this time, uh, this time last year when it was like, hang on a minute, isn't this the guy that wears, uh, that wears hoodies all the time and has a, uh, a strange affiliation with Kangol? And, um, and what's, it, what's he going to be like as the mayor? And I, I can honestly say that you've been absolutely dapper and a, an utter gentleman. 
um, throughout the whole thing, which I'm sure shocked many people. In fact, I know it shocked many people because the amount of times I've been out and around in Stapleford in, with yourself in the likes of the Mill Club, and people have said, especially those that know your slightly less salubrious past, um, have said, Richard, how on earth did you become the mayor? And your default answer, it turns out, has been to point at me and go, it's his fault, he nominated me. So, now, being, uh, being one that doesn't want to accept all of the blame, I would say that it takes more than simply a proposer to make something happen, and, uh, and the vast majority of this chamber completely recognise the same thing that, uh, that I did when I made that proposal and when it was almost unanimously supported, which is that you, have, um, you, you are not a person that lets anything get in your way. And certainly this year, you have not let anything get in your way. We didn't know what this year was going to turn out to be like. It was straight off the back of COVID. Not all the restrictions were lifted yet. It could have been another unfortunate lacklustre year for, uh, for civic events. Luckily for you, it hasn't been. And luckily for Broxtow, you have completely picked up and made up, in fact, for, uh, for, for lost time. Um, it would be remiss to, uh, to not mention um, the absolutely sterling work that you've done for Broxtow Youth Homelessness. Um, we can all recognise how much of a worthy cause it is. We all know I think everybody knows, especially given your social media presence, um, everybody knows how much work you put in for them. And it's really, really um, gratifying to see that that, that wonderful organisation's recognition of your efforts in making you um, their, uh, their chair, to which cements and substantiates um, your ongoing efforts um, on, the, on their behalf, um, aiding fundraising and awareness of the issues that they're tackling. So, uh, so for that alone is, uh, is worthy of thanks. Um, but everything else that, uh, that you've done over and above that is, uh, is just a, that's, that's the cherry on the cake, it really is. So um, it's, no, uh, it's no secret that you're going to miss the role. Um, it's obvious by how much gusto you've given it that, uh, that you're going to miss it. I have been running a sweepstakes for quite some time um, because it's also no secret that, uh, that, that Councillor Grindel can't wait to get hold of the chain. And, I've been, and the sweepstakes I've been running is who would win the tug of war match. <laughs> um, so, uh, so hopefully it, um, it doesn't come to that. I know that you're, uh, I know that you're more than happy to, uh, to, to hand it over because, uh, because I know that uh, you, know, you and David have been friends for a very, very long time. Um, so I'm going, to, uh, I'm going to wrap up what I'm saying, but I would like to propose, um, on behalf of all of us here, a vote of thanks for your absolutely amazing efforts this year. Thank you. Thank you very much, Richard. Mr. Mayor, and this will be the last time you hear that from me, Richard. <laughs> Uh, I would echo the sentiments expressed by Councillor Hallam and the thanks that we all owe you, not just these councillors and officers, but the people of Broxton, for the tremendous job you've done uh, over the last year. I remember talking to you at the beginning of the year saying this will be the quickest year of your life. You'll get to Christmas and then suddenly it's May again. Mm. Uh, but you've done your duties with a, an enthusiasm and it, that's almost infectious. And uh, whilst I'm never quite uh, sure about your choice of hats and sometimes your attire, as I frequently make comment about, I am looking forward to, to Donna particularly to seeing the results of his diet. <laughs> because I'm saying during the last year that he's certainly grown a little bit bigger. If I'm a little bit thinner, I think I've lost it and he's picked it up. But Mr. Mr. Mayor... You have carried out your, your duties this year with an enthusiasm that's infectious, with due diligence, with a sense of fun, but never missing the seriousness of the occasions, particularly the difficulties when you were deputy to Janet Patrick and then, of course, the mayor yourself. It has been an incredible difficult two years, 
but you've carried yourself with an authority and a respect that we all recognise. So, Mr Mayor, it gives me great pleasure to second the vote of thanks proposed by Councillor Hallam and thank you most sincerely for the tremendous job that you've done. Thank you. That's really kind of you. <laughs> Councillor Gould. Well, Richard. Mm. <laughs> no, you weren't expecting this. No, but you've known me longer than anyone else. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, A lot longer. You may not know this, but I've known Richard for most of his life. Um, mm. From being a naughty little boy <laughs> to a troublesome teen. Mm. But the man he has become is very different to the way he was back then. I think Richard's interest in his local community began with the birth of his daughter. He wanted a safe, caring and nurturing environment for her. Because Stapleford is a deprived area and Richard has done much to alleviate some of that deprivation. His work with the youth clubs, providing time and energy, plus clothing and food, is remarkable. Now, why are you laughing? I'm not. I was hiding behind that. <laughs> <laughs> because it's all true. <coughs> Richard, in his role as mayor, has raised funding for his charities, as well as placing them in the spotlight. His enthusiasm and energy never diminishes. He is kind generous, compassionate, and non-judgmental, always prepared to go the extra mile. Finally, on a very personal note, I want to say thank you for your kindness and support to me during a time of anguish and fear. All the very best in your future roles, whatever they may be, Richard. Well done. Thank you. <laughs> wow, thank you. Yeah, Sorry, thanks. I can see Councillor Patrick over there. Mr Mayor, I was, as we all know, the mayor before you, and so I was particularly interested and following you, and it has been so exciting and interesting. It, you've been a really, a really great mayor. First of all, you've been enthusiastic, and that is needed, particularly in hard times. Secondly, you have worked tremendously hard. You have never stopped. Whatever time I ring you up, except last weekend, brother, you replied very quickly. Sorry. And what's more, you've got results. You've got results. I'd just like to say a very big thank you because I know that you've worked so hard in very difficult circumstances. It's not just about raising money, it's about energy and effort and keeping going. You did all that and we are proud of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Richard, I'm, I'm, I'll say a few words because it's all been said, but uh, I understand your last engagement yesterday was to the, the old police station yes. in, in Stapleford, and I understand that there were quite a few people looking around all the rooms in, in case they, were, they could find your name scrawled anywhere on the wall, but uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I understand that, that they, they weren't able to find any, so that's fine. <laughs> as as Councillor Patrick has just mentioned, we've had before you two... Uh, mayors in the term of this council, Mick, who was managed 10 months before COVID descended on us, was a fantastic mayor in those 10 months. Janet, who had the, the, the period mayor that we hope never, ever materialises again, but also in the circumstances, fantastically, did fantastically. And I thought, who's going to top that? And Richard, you have, and more so. And what's more, you've actually put I would say, a new dimension onto the office of Mayor of Rockstone. And the, it doesn't have to be uh, stuffy. It doesn't have to be formal. It can be completely different to that and probably achieve 
uh, and just as well, as well results, if not better results. And I see you've done an absolute fantastic job, and I'm uh, proud to call you a friend. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. You're still Mr. Mayor for a few moments more, I believe. Yeah. Um, Can we? The longer you talk, the longer I'm the mayor, so you go for it. <laughs> I would, I would just like to pass on uh, my, my thanks to you and the work you've done, particularly for being at Cater Lane Rec in my division a couple of times in the last year to celebrate um, council, former councillor Joan Briggs, who we all miss very well. Thank you very much for the two occasions that you were there in support of Joan's memory. Thank you. That's my pleasure. Thank you. Well, we move on now. Let's get David up here. Right, so thank you, everybody. That's really kind of you. And I've said it all the time. It's teamwork. The, the team's amazing. I just turn up wearing a chain and do the easy bit. There's, there's loads of people in the background that make it all happen. So, you know, thanks to them as well, because they do a cracking job. So, yeah, and, and thank you, everyone, for all your kind words. Right, so the next item, this is what we're all here for today. Oh, sorry. Oh, OK, so we've got to vote on the thanks for the outgoing mayor. Oh, OK. All in support, I suppose. Unanimous. <laughs> <laughs> That's unanimous. unanimous. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> Crikey. Can I just say the public gallery vote? Yeah, well, we'll take that as well. But no, no, thank you, everybody. It's been an absolute honour and a pleasure. So, yeah, brilliant. Right. So, item number six. This is... This is... No item five. Oh, item five. What's that? Nice speech. Have I got the wrong thing here? Sorry. I'm, I'm looking at the wrong thing. Sorry. Oh, oh it's on page... Yeah, that's it. This. There, look. Yeah, okay. So, election, yeah, election of mayor. That's... I'm reading the wrong thing. Sorry, I was trying to keep the chain longer. Right. Page yeah, OK, page six. Right, item four. OK, so we're asking for nominations for the election of mayor for Broxtonborough Council until the annual meeting in 2023. And do we have a proposer? Yes, thank you, Mr Mayor. Mr Mayor, Alderman, Freeman, councillors, officers, ladies and gentlemen, and anyone else who's managed to get a ticket this evening. It gives me great pleasure to nominate my colleague, Councillor David Grindell, as Mayor of the Borough of Broxtow for 2022-23. David was born in Gosport, Hampshire, somewhere that's been in the news recently, but we'll probably talk about that after this evening, and later moved to Plymouth, where he attended school before going on to train with the NHS. He has two grown-up children, four grandchildren, and one great-grandchild. After years of working in Bristol, Newcastle and Manchester, he became an employment and training officer in Mansfield and moving to Stapleford in 2003. In 2005, David became a councillor representing the Stapleford South East Ward on Stapleford Town Council and he has been town mayor of Stapleford twice. Some would say that he deserves a medal for that alone. He was first elected to Broxton Borough Council in 2011. David believes passionately in serving the people of Broxton, and he's been involved in the Digging Community Allotment, the Disability Forum, Stapleford Combined Services Club, Stapleford Community Group, and supported St Helens Church. David also supported the Royal Marines Association and was instrumental in bringing the Walter Parker Beasley Memorial Plaque to the town square. David has chosen the mental health in the community of Broxtow, based in Middle Street, Beeston, as his charity. And I know he will also be supporting other organisations, for example, Forever Stars, a charity based in Beeston who gives support to those who have experienced a death of a young child. He also hopes to raise awareness for the White Ribbon campaign <clears throat> to end domestic violence. I know from many years of friendship and political activism with David that he will make an excellent mayor and will put all his efforts in promoting Broxtow and supporting its residents. He is approachable, friendly, sometimes hilarious and sometimes very frustrating, but there is always one thing you can rely on, his loyalty. Mr Mayor, it gives me great pleasure to nominate Councillor David Grindell to be the new Mayor of Rockstone.
And do we have a seconder for that proposal? Yes, I have second that. Um, members of the public, councillors and Mr Mayor, while well, you're still Mr Mayor. Um, David, it gives me great pleasure to second the nomination for you to become the Mayor of the Borough. Last July, in your capacity of Deputy Mayor, you came to mark the occasion of my dad's 90th birthday. Your visit made it a special occasion and I know how much he enjoyed the chat with us. You also share my passion in supporting mental health here in the community. During the last few years, I think we've all experienced a degree of mental health difficulties. You have been to visit and support Middle Street Resource Centre during these difficult times, and we thank you very much for this. So when you've asked us to be your chosen charity of the year, we're all so happy to accept. Everyone at the centre is excited and looks forward to working with you to raise or to further raise the profile of mental health support we offer to the whole community. To finish, I'd like to extend a warm invitation to all of you uh, to come and visit to see what we do. Thank you. Okay. Oh, um, Councillor Jackson. Yeah, thank you very much, Mr Mayor. And can I just also uh, second David's nomination to be Mayor of Broxstoke? David, I hadn't realised until uh, until I heard the nomination just how much you'd moved around the country. But you put it all right when you chose to move to Broxstoke uh, all those years ago. I I, um, I know you'll you'll do a great job as Mayor of Broxstoke. You did an exceptional job as Mayor of, uh, uh, of uh, Stapleford twice. And I know that because you couldn't move in the town without bumping into you somewhere, uh, usually more than once in a day. So uh, you, you'll throw yourself into being mayor here and follow Richard uh, in your own style, I'm sure. Uh, and I know you'll, you'll do it incredibly well. He's already making plans and he's already told me what I've got to do with his civic service and I'll be delighted <laughs> to do that later in the year as well, David. Uh, but uh, you have the support of our group and of the whole council of your year of mayor. Thank you. Okay. So, are we going to are we move into the vote? Yep, yeah, okay. So, it gives me a great pleasure actually to do this. So, all those in favour for Councillor David Grindle to be the next Mayor of Broxstow? Oh, it is, isn't it? That's unanimous. So, thank you, everybody. So, David Grindle, um, I, I declare that Councillor David Grindle be elected Mayor of the Borough of Broxstow until the annual meeting 2023. If you'd like to come up here for a bubble swap, all yours. Thank you. That's what they give me to read tonight. I will now invite the newly elected mayor to read aloud and sign the Declaration of Acceptance of Office. I, David Grindell, have been appointed to the office of mayor of the Council of the Borough of Broxstow declare that I take that office upon myself and will duly and faithfully fulfill the duties of the accordance to the best of my judgment and ability. I undertake to observe the code of conduct which is expected of members of Broxstow Borough Council. <laughs> I'm coming, I'm coming, hang on, I've got to pull my pants up. It's an absolute honour to do this. Yeah. Um. 
Mate, you look quite small. Mr. Mayor, well, my pleasure. You have a really good year. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I've been noticed they've given me a geriatric chair, but I'm too young for one. <laughs> unveil this picture of David. I don't know if you can see it at the back, but I don't want to drop it. Turn it round the other way, it'd be better. <laughs> there you go. He looks like you. Thank you very much. All right, it's my pleasure. No, it's as I've got my hair cut. It's my pleasure. You enjoy your year. Thank you, I will. Thank you very much. Thank you. I am, I am very proud uh, of every all councillors here who have decided, in their wisdom, to vote for me as mayor of Broxtow. <laughs> and if you hadn't, you wouldn't have got out this evening. Uh, but, but truthfully, it's important that councillors do make a good judgment, and they have this time. Uh, <laughs> uh, and and I, I, I've got a, a speech written here, and it's gone. It's here somewhere. So, first of all, for those people online, Chief Exec, I would like to, which in fact, um, let's, let's get these things right. The people online, there are some from down south, uh, with a name like mine. Um, but a lot of people do not know who some members of this council are. Now, obviously, on my left is a chief executive who you would never, never upset. Uh, and um, obviously, um, she has been here some time and she knows all the rules. And we all sometimes try and break them to get our own way. But Ruth Hyde, who... Um, I've done a lot of work here, and I'm glad to see her on my left. Now, Sash, uh, Sash Scusa, who's um, here, is um, watching that I don't do anything wrong, legally. And, uh, well, that's fine. Now, if I go back to my speech, officially speech, is that uh, it's very important to be mayor. But if you, as a mayor, whoever you are, can do the good work for the residents and the businesses and the people of the borough, that is exactly why we're here. Now, I'll cut it short, Chief, exactly. She nodded, did she nod that? <laughs> i cut it short. We, there are two reasons, main reasons why I wish to... Um, be mayor, and one is to get bigger support for mental health in the community. This is across the borough. Mental health, and maybe the two or three people within this building who do have some sort of problem. And it's not just one thing. Mental health carries, uh, carries a variety of issues. And at Middle Street, they call it Middle Street, that's the name of the building. What's important is, as you see outside, when you go outside in a minute, as you'll see, it's mental health in the community. That is exactly what it's about. Now, I thought, well, I'm going to do my best to help. And Paul Welsh over there, um, he and I, and, um, and Roger and Sylvia have actually started sort of three or four months ago. Uh, and... Everything didn't turn out right, but um, they will do by the end of this week, I hope. Uh, it's important because we will be visiting 
the whole of the borough. We will be taking the message out to the whole of the borough. And hopefully by the end of next week, you will be able to purchase uh, a badge. And, um, and in, I will be in all areas. So councillors, when you turn up to, to an event um, and I'm there, don't worry, I will be selling you a badge. Um, and if you've got no change, don't worry, I've got a card holder machine in my pocket. <laughs> <laughs> Secondly, what is very important is the white ribbon. Now, we're working uh, with um, Froxel's Women's Project at the moment for mm. the simple reason is um, that we have an administrative issue which is nothing to do with me, it's to do with the bosses here. So, I'm working with them and taking them out between now and Christmas, right throughout the borough. We will be taking out pledge cards. We will get people to pledge no more abuse. No more abuse anywhere. There's so many, there's a variety of, of abuse, and I'm not going to put up with it, and I'm sure you're not going to put up with it. And we're talking about all people, adults and children. No more abuse and the more that one can get to Eastwood, Kimberley, everywhere uh, to get this message out and this message is not just for two weeks in November, it's for the whole year of my office. Now I could go on but I'm not going to. Uh, um, so, um, sorry. Oh yes, I forgot about that. Yeah, fifty-seven pages. That is. Yes, I'll do that. Thank you. Um, well, as you know, my 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 message uh, this evening, um, I've lost it in my head, so it doesn't matter. The most important thing is that Councillor Richard McRae, as we all know, has done an excellent excellent job. So, Richard, we have a few little gifts here for you. But it's not my photograph, right? <laughs> no. So I shall slide over. Uh, fine, Ruth, thank you. Richard, on behalf of all the work that you have done, and for all the staff and all the councillors uh, in the community and at the council, wish you so much goodness and happiness, and we know you've enjoyed your year. Yeah. And I think we've got a little badge in here. That's if the box opens. Yes, it goes. There you are, Richard. Thank you. Wear it with pride. I will do. That's where it comes up, yeah. Let me go. Bye. Thank you. This is wasn't how I planned everything, uh, Chief Executive, but it turned out this way. Oh, yes. Now, this is very important. Uh, this is the appointment of Deputy Mayor. And, um, there, right, so uh, we got nominations, please, for uh, Deputy Mayor, please. Uh, uh, Councillor Marshall, thank you. Thank you, uh, and may I be the first to call you, thank you, Mr. Mayor, uh, in, your, in your new role. I'll call you Chair going forward, but for, for today's special event, I'll call you Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much. Um, members and officers um, of the Council, freemen and women, aldermen and women, uh, and people of the Broxtow, um, I'm really, really honoured to be able to propose Theresa, um, Theresa Cullen um, uh, as Deputy Mayor, but, but, but before I formally do that, um, David, I would like to pass on my congratulations to you, of course, um, and anything I can do over the next year to help you and assist you during your term uh, of office, please just call on me um, if, if, you need, if you need to do so. I'd also like to thank Richard, actually. I know that Milan Radulovic um, spoke about it and touched on it earlier, but, you know, he was a, an excellent Deputy Mayor to to my friend Janet Patrick as well when she was mayor, in the most difficult of years probably, um, in to, uh, that, that Brockstow has, has experienced during the pandemic. And so Richard, thank you um, very much for that as well. But in terms of um, the appointment of uh, Deputy Mayor, um, Theresa, 
Um, um, I'm absolutely thrilled to um, be able to do that. I'm thrilled um, because you're a colleague. I'm, fr I'm thrilled because you're a political friend of mine, but most importantly, you're a personal friend of mine, and I can't think of anyone better suited um, for the role, so I'm, I'm, I'm incredibly proud um, to do that, uh, Teresa. For those of you who don't know Teresa, um, she has, of course, Broxtow running through her veins um, from when she was uh, incredibly um, a, a, a young um, teenage mum uh, bringing up uh, uh, kids in, in a flat in Valley Road um, and then bringing up the rest of your family in and around the borough. You have Broxtow, of course, coursing through your veins. And um, you've always been an incredible, uh, incredibly passionate about about the area, um, and I know that you have a a daily kind of like um, a daily kind of test to yourself to do something good for others um, in the community or those that you come across. And you know that's a wonderful trait to test oneself to be good and to do meaningful acts of good on a daily basis. You are, of course, a remarkable advocate for your ward, Beeston Rylands. I've seen that firsthand when I've visited, and you've got a litany. Of, of achievements that you have uh, that you have been pers that you've personally driven, whether that's the Pensioners Friday Lunch Club, which I've enjoyed on several um, occasions, um, your immense pride in Leighton Crescent Community Centre there, and you know is is a wonderful facility for your for your residents as well, um, and indeed trying to influence for the betterment of Beeston Rylands when the best development is going to happen, and tr always trying to think ahead, always trying to do good. For, for for the people. Um, and I know that when you are Deputy Mayor, I know that your effort, your experience, your gusto will be um, as a great ambassador for the rest of the borough. And I know that you'll take on that with gusto. So really, it's um, enough for me to say, um, really, that I've got the immense privilege of, um, of nominating Teresa for that position for the upcoming year, 22-23, and I hope that you will all join me in doing so. Thanks for the barber car. Thank you. Thank you, Mr Mayor. David, Mr Mayor. Thanks, Mr um, thank you, fellow members, officers, ladies and gentlemen, honourable guests. I have the great pleasure, and I'm delighted to second you, Theresa, second your nomination for Deputy Mayor. Um, I only really got to know you properly when we started working together on housing in 2019. And in that time, I think we did develop a really good relationship and got to know each other, what we were both about and our motivations. Uh, and from that, <coughs> what I could say about Theresa is that she's definitely driven... She's passionate, she's determined, dedicated, hardworking and very enthusiastic. And I think all those qualities are really necessary yeah. to be a good councillor and also, no doubt, to be a good deputy mayor. And I think you, you'll be fine, absolutely fine. Now, she's been a member of the Labour Party for 20 years, but I'm not going to hold that against you today. Um, and you have been highly influential in your other roles uh, within the voluntary and charity sectors, including, of course, the Chief Executive of Transform Training Limited, where you be, I believe you help young people who've not really had the best start in life to get skills, um, become more, feel more supported, um, give them direction and confidence. It's a really important role and you do a great job there, Teresa. Now, when not working, I've often pho phoned her and she's in Spain. But she tells me she's still working. I'm not entirely convinced. But very often, she's more often making sandwiches at Beeston Ryland Community Centre uh, or doing other charitable work. And you know what they say? If you want a job doing, ask a busy person. So now you've got another job as deputy mayor. <laughs> you're, going to be, you're always approachable, very supportive, and I know you'll make a great, excellent deputy mayor. And the year's going to be a tough one for many people, in Broxtow as well. Um, rising food prices, energy bills going up, etc. People are going to need to feel supported. And I think yourself and David uh, will make a great te team and do a great deal of good work within the community. So congratulations on your nomination. Enjoy it and good luck. Lydia, Lydia. Are there any more? Lydia Ball. Lydia Ball, Councillor Lydia Ball. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hiding Mayor. Hiding away you are. Uh, fellow councillors, um, 
ex-mayors and ladies and gentlemen, I'm thinking crumbs. I've seen lots of mayors and deputy mayors, Teresa, and I'm really, really happy and really um, pleased to be able to second your nomination to deputy mayor. And I know that from the things that Greg have said and how passionate you are, uh, I know that you're hardworking. I know that you care about the residents of this borough and I know that you care about the, the um, independent living members of this borough and I'm sure they will be delighted to see you because you can go around and see them now, can't you? And see all the good work that has been done all the years, I think, for Broxtow with housing. I always think we looked after the residents in this borough. I think we should all give ourselves a pat on the back occasionally. And um, anyway, I hope you have a really good time. And of course, it starts tomorrow morning. Make sure you're up early, half past four. I'll be looking for you. Okay, have a great time, Teresa. Thank you. Uh, I call for the vote now. All those in favour, please. Unanimous. 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 Thank you very much. Carried. They can just say carry it. So Theresa McCullen will be elected as deputy mayor okay. until the annual meeting. Yeah, okay. And invited to come forward. I will now call upon the newly elected deputy mayor uh, to come to read aloud and sign the declaration of acceptance of office. Reading. Yeah. She's okay. I, Theresa Cullen, have been appointed to the office of Deputy Mayor of the Council of the Borough of Broxton, declare that I take that office upon myself and will duly and faithfully fulfil the duties of it according to the best of my judgment and ability. I undertake to observe the code of conduct which is expected of members of Broxton Borough Council.
Yes. <laughs> great, great pleasure, and um, giving you the super chain and mm. everything there from Rock to Board Council. Give up, it's yeah. Lynn. Thank you very much, Theresa, Deputy Mayor. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Item six, election of leader. Do we have a proposal for the leader of the council? Councillor Steve Carr, please. Oh, you've forgotten who I was then. <coughs> Uh, Mr Mayor, uh, ladies and gentlemen, fellow councillors, Alderman Freeman, um, if it's been said once about Milan Radulovic, well, it's been said once. Uh, <laughs> True. <laughs> uh, Michael Rich, you may remember him, he was once leader of the council and he was a group leader of the uh, Liberal Democrat group, once described trying to... Um, look after the Liberal Democrat group as like herding cats. I'm, I'm afraid I was probably one of the cats that he was trying to herd, but that was then and this is now. So you can imagine what it's like in that case, leading an alliance of 14 Labour councillors, seven Liberal Democrats, two Independent and one Independent Alliance councillor. Not only has he done that exceptionally well, but he's done that despite his obvious uh, health problems. And in fact, he had to hand over some of his uh, duties to myself and to Greg and to David Fox whilst he had his operation. But you would never have thought it. I think y your dedication to the job is such that he must be the only person I've known that's tried to run the council from a hospital bed. <laughs> Put it like that. But, you know, we, we did it, we tried, to keep, we tried to keep it away from you, but no, it, it, was, <laughs> it was never going to work, was it? <laughs> I um, have no hesitation in uh, nominating Milan, Milan Radulovic to carry on being leader of the council. We've had a very, very difficult three years, to say the least, with, with COVID. I, I fear that next year and the years after that, are going to be equally as bad for different reasons with regards to the economy, etc. And we need a strong uh, leader to keep us all together to deliver what's right for the residents of Broxtow. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have a seconder, please? Uh, Councillor Marshall, thank you very much. Thank you. I um, would like to to second um, Millen as well for leader, um, and I'm I can uh, testify that when I've been talking to my uh, officer members and directors of, of finance for updates when Millen was on his bed, he often knew what I was talking about to Zul from Mr. Dar before before I did as well, and yeah, he never quite managed to let go of the reins. <laughs> Um, even when he was uh, dicing with uh, dicing with death on his on on, on in, in the hospital ward, and I think you know we all know about the um, about the uh, effort and the dedication um, and the commitment that Millen has to Roxdow, and we've seen it time and time again um, in this chamber. But interestingly, you know, I don't think we can. We laugh and we joke about it, and he can always take a joke, and he's always told this chamber to retain its sense of humour. But in all seriousness, when you talked to the surgeons and uh, the individuals at, you know, our wonderful NHS, it is not an underestimate. It is not an understatement to say um, there were times when they didn't think Millen was going to pull through, and I think it's a testament to his constitution mm -hmm. and indeed um, his own resilience. Um, and his own strength, really, that he's coming through and he's looking better and better each day and long uh, may that continue for the next year 
uh, and into the future of Broxdale Council. So I'm absolutely delighted to uh, second the nomination for Millen um, as leader. I learn a lot from him uh, and, and I respect him deeply. So thank you, Millen. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else wishes to speak, please? All right, go on, we carry on to the vote then, please. All those in favour? Keep your hand up, please, so you're voting for. You, yeah, it's the majority. Carried, thank you very much. Any, or any against. Or any against. Oh, yes, I forgot about that. I apologise, yeah. Any against? Any abstentions? Votes yeah. with 16 abstentions. Carried uh, 22 votes, 16 abstentions. Thank you very much. Uh, Leader of the Council, Milan, yes, can I help you? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I promise I won't take uh, long of your time. Just to thank my colleagues, friends, and uh, associates for once again placing the faith. We, uh, in, in myself, it has been an extremely difficult two years. I'm sure you're aware of that. And the situation and the pressure and tension in Eastern Europe and Ukraine in particular is certainly another one that will attack text or tax the whole of the Western democracies and indeed will impact largely on this council's future. And as we move into a period of uncertainty, uh, we will do so, I hope, that with a sense of fairness. I've tried in the recommendations that we'll put forward to be fair, to give every member of this council the opportunity uh, in at least having the ability to participate in some way in the decision making of this council. Something that's very passionate to me. When I first got elected in 1986 uh, to this council, I remember the first thing that was told to me was, you stop at the back and you don't say a word until you've been on for at least a year. And I find that completely insulting to, to, my, to my intellect and to my beliefs. And during that, that period of starting off in politics, you weren't allowed to be a front bench spokesperson, you know, and any time that you wanted to speak, even in your own group, you were formally called by a chairman. I have tried to break with that tradition, Mr Mayor, by actually actively encouraging debate to take place among even our political opposition because they have a right to represent their community. And you'll see, Mr Mayor, as we progress, that that opportunity will be extended, I hope, to every single member of this council to actively be involved in the decision-making process as best I can under the tight legislation. It will be an immensely challenging time, not just with the, the devolution bill, and of course we know about the East Midlands Leveling Up Fund, but also with the Staple for Towns deal, the East Midlands Kimberley Leveling Up Funds, and of course, as I spoke earlier, the situation regarding the impact of Brexit on the quality of and life uh, of residents of this borough, and of course the situation in Ukraine. So, Mr Mayor, in doing so, I just wanted to say a big thank you, and I will endeavour to at least be fair. It was once said uh, of me in politics, it was Robert Pettit, I don't know if you can remember Robert Pettit. Robert Pettit, he once said to me, he says, Millen, you're the fairest politician I've ever met in your life. You treat us all like a dog. <laughs> <laughs> so, Mr Mayor, with that, with those few thank yous, I will endeavour, as I say, to engage people wherever possible and to actively encourage participation in your own area that decisions will affect generations to come. Yeah. 
recognition of uh, political leaders. Um, we are requested to note that the leader and deputy leaders of the main political groups who would like to speak Uh, yes, thank you, Councillor Carr. Yes, I, I'm leader of the Liberal Democrat group. We have a revolving uh, deputy leader uh, situation uh, in our group, and this year it is the turn of Councillor Tim Hallam to be deputy leader of the Liberal Democrat group. Sorry? You say it a bit louder, then we could hear it then. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Richard. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, uh, just to, Jackson, yeah. to confirm that myself as leader of the Conservative group, Councillor Mel Crow as deputy leader of the Conservative group. Thank you very much, Councillor Richard Jackson. For the record, I'm sorry, I can't stand yes. up. I've started to struggle a bit. Yes, sir. Uh, myself as leader of the Labour group, and of course, Councillor Greg Marshall, deputy leader. Thank you very much, uh, um, Melan Rudovich, and um, everyone's fine with that. Thank you. So, um, this is I end of item seven. We move on to item eight. Yeah. 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 I'm going, <coughs> that's right, I'm going to bring forward. Item 11, on the agenda, there has been an amendment submitted that affects other items on this agenda. Therefore, let us consider the Constitution. Thank you. Do we have a proposal? Do we have a proposal, please? Yes, sir. Uh, Councillor yep. Carr, please. Thank you. Yeah, but members may recall that on the meeting of April the 13th, uh, we actually adopted the new structure of cabinet system. And um, uh, 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 as a result of that, the constitution uh, needed to be amended quite substantially uh, with a lot of work. And thanks to all those uh, councillors that were on the task and finish group with regards to that. Uh, I have, though, got uh, uh, amendments uh, which I think have been circulated to everybody, which is why we had to bring item 11 prior to uh, appointing people to committees, etc. Um, they, uh, they, I'll read these out. The following amendment is proposed by me, blah, blah, blah. Uh, page 93 and also on page 111, uh, we are removing the words or the chairs or vice chairs of committees. The law, as it stands at the moment, and the statutory guidance in May 2019, says that only members of the executive or committees of the executive, so that's the cabinet or committees uh, of the cabinet, uh, cannot be on overruling scrutiny. So we've actually taken out the chairs and vice chairs of, for example, planning or, uh, and those committees. Page 133, similarly, licensing appeals. There is, uh, there is no restriction on, uh, legal restriction on, on councillors being on the licensing and appeals committees. So we've deleted the words leader, deputy leader, and cabinet members may not serve on this committee and replaced with similar wording to planning, which is members of the licensing and appeals committee must complete training prior to attending the meeting of the committee. Do we want to take that vote first, or should I? Yeah, and then ca if yeah. I can carry on with. I need a second for that. I'll second amendment. that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. <clears throat> so continue, Councillor Carr. Right. No, no, continue. Does anybody else wish to speak? Sorry. Yeah, yeah. On the amendment, this is, isn't it? Yeah. Anybody? <laughs> No, okay, thank you very much. I right, take a vote, please. All those in favour? This is the amendment. Just yes. right. Yes, the amendment. We can take it for the amendment.
against Curry. What's the title against? Those against. Abstentions. Oh, sorry, I haven't finished counting. Too quick on there. Amendment is carried. 23 in favour, 16 against. Amendment carried. 23 in favour, 16 against. Thank you very much. And back to Councillor Coroner, yeah. please. Thank you. I, I shan't say much else. I'm, I'm assuming that everybody has actually read uh, the Constitution from cover to cover. And. Uh, um, uh, it, obviously, a lot of the things have changed because of um, the new arrangements, but we have changed some timings of speakers, etc., etc., uh, because at one stage, uh, I think particularly with regards to motions, after the, the, the proposer and the second had finished speaking and the proposer summing up, there'd be five minutes to, <laughs> for the members to actually contribute to the debate, which is uh, not a good idea. Uh, so uh, this is what we have before us, and um, as I say, a lot of work has gone uh, into this. Um, it was a very congenial task and, and finish group, so I'm actually quite surprised that the, the opposition have voted against it, because they were involved all the way uh, through this process, and, um, and I uh, commend this and uh, propose that we adopt uh, the uh, new constitution. If I can have a second, please. Thank I'll you, Councillor Carr. I'll second that, Chair. Thank you very much. Anybody? Yes. Anyone else wish to speak? <coughs> yeah. Councillor Jackson. Thank you. Uh, yes, thank you very much, Mr Mayor. I hadn't really uh, intended to say very much on this. The reason we're voting against it, having sat on the working group, is that things have changed from what the working group actually proposed. Uh, we had a lengthy debate on this, and he's shaking his head, but it's true. We had a lengthy debate on this at the last council meeting, so I don't see much point in rehearsing all those same arguments. And then we get here this evening to find out that something else has changed. And we now have two vice chairmen on the overview and scrutiny committee that's never been mentioned before. It's not even in this document, which several times refers to the vice chair of that committee and the powers of the vice chair of that committee, etc., etc. So I'm um, not quite sure why, why that change has come about. It certainly dilutes further the role of the opposition, uh, in my opinion, in that committee and in the running of the council. And I'm disappointed, uh, as I said uh, back in last month's meeting, disappointed that we're unable to support this. But I think for those reasons, we're not going to support it this evening, Mr Mayor. Thank you very much. Councillor Owen. Owen, please. Yes, uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. May I congratulate you on your appointment uh, this evening. You would have thought that a council that had got the problems that this council has at the moment, it would be the last thing that it would be wanting to do in the final year of an administration to completely change the constitution and the way in which it is working. And I remind you of the problems I remind you of the problems, the fact that residents aren't able to make contact with this council very effectively, the fact that there are many that are left without their bins Point being Point of order, entered. Mr Mayor. Point of order. This is completely not talking about the resolution that we have before us. This is a debate about the constitution of this council. Nothing to do with phones, nothing to do with anything else. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I did preface my, uh, my remarks by saying that I thought the last thing that this council should be focusing on at this time is a change in the Constitution. What it should be focusing on is sorting out the problems that it has, uh, which I was trying to Councilor highlight. Councillor Owen, excuse me. Um, please keep to the agenda, the item on the agenda, please. I'm more, more than happy to, as I say, this should not be the focus of this council at the moment. And I'll make a few comments about the constitution. Uh, the, I think Councillor Carr said it's been read from cover to cover. I don't know by whom, because I have, uh, I have uh, spotted um, at least a, a couple of um, errors. It's not been proofread. Uh, I just point out page 121, 
where there's an error. I'm assuming on page one, two, three that there is a, a well, I am assuming it is a, uh, a proofreading error. Last resort, well, yeah, last resort option and consideration, the second bullet point. Uh, I'd be grateful for an explanation of what that means if it is not uh, a, uh, a mistake in terms of uh, typing and making up the document. So we're being presented tonight with a document that hasn't even been proofread and we're being asked to support it. We have not had the benefit of the IRP making their recommendations for special responsibility allowances. So we don't know how much this new scheme, this new system, is going to cost. Yet we're being asked to make a decision tonight to introduce it on the basis of not knowing what it is going to cost. The IRP should have produced a, 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 a report and we should have had those findings in front of us. I find, looking at what is proposed, that the whole uh, issue of scrutiny appears to be quite weak. The proposals in front of us, as I see, are for one committee of overview and scrutiny. I know it says in the report that at the discretion of the chairman, uh, there may be working groups or subcommittees set up, but that's not something that has been enshrined in the Constitution. There need to be scrutiny committees of all of the major spending areas of this council. But having said that about uh, overview and scrutiny, I do notice that there's going to be an awful lot of scrutiny in January 2023, according to the schedule of meetings. We've got uh, an overview and scrutiny meeting on the 12th, We've got an overview and scrutiny meeting on the 30th, and we've got an overview and scrutiny meeting planned for the 31st of January. And as one who is likely to be appointed tonight to the overview and scrutiny committee, there is uh, only so much excitement that someone of my age can take in any one month. And that seems to be going a little bit uh, over the top. So, of course, we're not going to support this tonight because it doesn't provide for transparency. It doesn't provide for significant involvement of the opposition in the whole process of monitoring this council. And we know, our residents know at the moment, this council is dysfunctional. It is dysfunctional. And all you are focusing on is changing the constitution in order that you can cover up that dysfunctionality rather than expose it to what it should be exposed to, real, vigorous and intensive scrutiny. So no, we won't support it tonight. Thank you, Councillor Owen. Councillor David Watts, please. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor, and congratulations on your uh, new position. And it's a, a great delight to see you as the mayor. I wasn't planning to speak tonight, but having heard uh, Councillor Owen's contribution, it, it, it's important that we do remind people, I think, that when the amendments to move to a cabinet system were proposed, they were fully supported by the opposition, who recognised that it will make this council uh, swifter, more uh, dynamic in addressing the uh, problems that every council faces. It's worth reminding, of course, that this is the system that we had before, and it was the uh, Conservatives who changed uh, to a committee system, uh, which we're now having to abandon because it just doesn't work in the modern uh, system. So I'm not inclined to take any lectures from uh, the Conservatives as to the, uh, uh, the functionality of this council, which is most clearly not a dysfunctional council. I think that's the same sort of attitude that we saw from uh, um, Lee Anderson MP today in declaring there was no problem with food banks. Yeah. Um, it is shameful that such comments are made. It is a real insult to the staff of this council who do a sterling job. 
And if uh, Councillor Owen is worried about the amount of uh, meetings, if he's not up to the job, I'm sure his leader can find somebody else who will do it far better. Um, the only other point I wanted to observe is I think Councillor Jackson has made a genuine mistake in talking about there being two uh, vice chairs for overview and scrutiny. That's not what's proposed. Um, and, and I think he's just made a mistake on that. Well, thank thank you. you very much, Councillor Watson. Yeah, for clarification, Mr. Mayor, I've got a note from the Deputy Monitoring Officer telling me that that's exactly the case. Uh, just to confirm that the Overview Scrutiny Committee will have one chair and two vice chairs, and it is suggested that your group appoints a vice chair this evening. <laughs> well, Mr. Mayor, the, um, the, 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 the list is in front uh, of um, uh, 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 the list is on our agenda item right and, and it's there excuse for him to say. Thank you. Uh, Leader of the Council, Milan, wishes to speak. Thank you, uh, Mr Mayor, and if the opposition wishes to rectify it, I'm quite happy to remove the position for a Conservative member's vice chair yeah. of the committee. Sorry. Quite happy to do that. Quite happy to do it. The reason I said in my opening comments tonight was to give the opportunity, which is something you don't do at County, the opposition a, a platform in working to the agenda. And it's interesting to note, Chair, tonight, the changes were being made for the strong leader models in line with his own government's recommendations. Of course, we all know the, the Honourable Member for Nuttall doesn't believe in the Conservative hierarchy or the Prime Minister, and so he doesn't take any notice of anything he says. But actually, actually, the County Council himself, and believe it or not, the Chairman of the Working Group, who's looking at changing to a cabinet system, is Councillor Philip Bowen. <laughs> Councillor Philip Bowen himself, the ultimate hypocrite. The ultimate hypocrite. And, and it's also noticeable that there is no opposition at, uh, ability to be involved in any of the decision-making process at the County Council. Instead, they want to force an elected mayor on us, and we all know who wants yeah. to be elected mayor. Yeah. Well, it ain't going to happen. But Mr Mayor, the word dysfunctional, what Councillor means is we manage quite well without him. That's his version of dysfunctional. In fact, we manage very well without him. Balances are up. <coughs> Everything in the council looks fairly good on a straight, ships on, a, on an even keel. We're moving forward quite dramatically now with our employment, as you said yesterday, Stapleford uh, Open, Stapleford Offices, and of course our green and environmental projects, all of which are, are, are going remarkably well. But when you talk about the IRP, and we're not talking about Institute of Revenues, we're actually talking about the Independent Remuneration Panel. And the reason they, they haven't met is till later on this year, Chair. But I have it assured, I have been assured at the highest possible level, that it will not affect his, Councillor Kerry's, Councillor Cubley's, and Councillor Owen. Two of them, well, three of those, take in, ballot, take in members' allowances and expenses of £145,000 between three of them. I can assure you, Councillor, you're on £40,000 a year. No, I'm not. Chair. Uh, uh, excuse me, <laughs> quiet please. When the leader is, any member is speaking, including the leader, I will not have anybody interfering or making noises or funny jokes. This is a very serious thing that we're discussing and I don't want to see it go down the hill and it's not going to go down the hill while so I'm chair. Okay? All, all we got I'm that? saying, Mr. Mayor, I have it on very good authority that it will not affect him financially. Uh, one iota. And Mr Mayor, I've tried from the outset to offer a knowledge branch to the opposition on the overview and scrutiny. Yes, you're right, Richard. Initially, the proposed working group proposals was for chair and vice chair. And the reason I asked for it to be chair and two vice chairs was to ensure that your group had at least a say in putting that agenda together. Something you deny at the County Council to all the opposition members. Yes, you do. Well, we'll, we'll watch then. We'll watch what positions you bring forward. 
<laughs> but that's what it is, Mr. Mayor. It's petty, it's almost childish behaviour from the opposition because there is nothing to cling on to. There's no massive failures to, to, to look at. There's no financial bad performance. Everything is moving forward progressively, constructively, and we are trying to involve everybody in this council in the decision-making process. What they mean is they would like to keep it all to themselves and the little group, and it was noticeable between 2015 and 2019, not once did they offer the opposition any chance to have any involvement in assembly of any agenda through the committee system. Right. Mr Mayor, all I want to hear tonight from the opposition is saying, well, we don't want to be part of vice chair of scrutiny, and I will make sure that's removed. Thank you very much. Right. Anyone else like to speak before Councillor Carr sums up? Is there anyone else wish to speak before Councillor Carr sums up? Councillor Patrick. Councillor Patrick. Thank you. Thank you. I'm not going to speak against anybody, but I do understand as I am down to be chair of scrutiny. When I first became councillor 11 years ago, we had scrutiny committees and always in January or around then, we had two days put aside when we scrutinised the whole work of, of, of the borough and it took two whole days to do it. And that is simply why there are two days that usually, and it takes a lot of work. That's why there are two days, no other reason. Councillor Pringle, thank you very much, Councillor Patrick. Thank you, Mr Mayor, and uh, congratulations on thank your you appointment this evening. Um, I, I have read the, uh, the 300 and odd pages that we're, we're talking about this evening. And I've got three questions. They may seem sort of very basic and simple questions, but if we look at page 105, and it's para 21.9, it says, the member who referred the matter under rule, and I'm not sure whether it's a zero or it's an O, but that's what it is. It says Rule O above may address the overview and scrutiny committee or scrutiny subcommittee in respect of the call for action for up to 10 minutes. Then if you turn the page to page 106 and it's 23.4, uh, it says rules naught to naught or zero to naught above shall apply to the consideration of a crime and disorder matter by the crime and disorder scrutiny committee as they apply to the consideration of a call for action by the overview and scrutiny committee or scrutiny subcommittee. Then if you go to page 107, 237, it says where the overview and scrutiny committee makes a report or recommendations to the council or provides a copy of a report or recommendations under rule O or zero above, the committee must notify the council, body or person to whom it makes or provides a copy of the report or recommendation to the council, body or person must, and then there's the sub -paras. Can you tell me please, what is rule zero or rule O? And, you know, if we're going to be sort of looking at something and, and recommending it goes forward, surely we need to know what that rule zero is or rule O. It's either zero or Oscar. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor. Um, Councillor Carr, would you like to sum up, please? Yes, thank you, uh, Mr Mayor. It's a shame that, that this, uh, this debate's descended into a political bash, if you like, a polit political football match. Um, with regards to specific questions about specific parts of the Constitution, uh, members have had these papers for over a week now, and it's a shame that they didn't raise these items with the monitoring officer prior to this meeting, so I shan't be asking any specific, answer any specific questions on those matters. <laughs> I shan't be answering those questions. If you need to speak to the monitoring officer, then do it after this meeting, and it would have been a, it would have been actually advisable if you'd done it before this meeting. But hey ho, that's the sort of opposition that we've got. Um, the overview and scrutiny committee. First of all, Council Owen complains that there isn't enough scrutiny, and then complains that there are too many meetings. It's either one or the other, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. You can't have them both. There is strong scrutiny in this constitution, and that has been done on purpose. However, you're complaining now the fact that we've offered you a vice chairmanship of the Overview and Scrutiny Committee. 
and you don't seem to be very happy with that. So as the leader has said, we'll, we'll take it off you because that will save a special res responsibility allowance because Councillor Owen, yet again, needs to be very concerned about how much this new constitution is going to cost us. There are less meetings for a start off, so that's going to cost the council as a whole less. So can I draw your attention to page 102 uh, in the constitution, which is regards to the overview and scrutiny committee. And I'm very sorry, Janet, that I'm afraid it looks as though this committee is going to be party political, judging by the, uh, the behaviour of the opposition tonight. Part 18.1. If a member of the Overview and Scrutiny Committee or a Scrutiny Subcommittee is subject to a party whip in respect of an issue to be considered by it, that member must declare the existence of the whip and the nature of it before the commencement of deliberations on the matter. The declaration and the detail of the whipping arrangements shall be recorded in the minutes of the meeting. Now, tonight fellow councillors and ladies and gentlemen, you will have seen that the Conservative Party are whipped. I don't know whether anybody else noticed that when we call for a vote on who's going to be the leader of the council, several members of the opposition actually put their hands up in favour of Councillor Radulovic being the leader of the councillor. I don't know whether Councillor Owen is the whip for the Conservative group, but my goodness, he nearly got his whip out mm. to tell them to actually put their hands down. You are not voting for him. You are abstaining or voting against. So we'll be watching very carefully at the Overview and Scrutiny Committee, the Conservative group, because we know now that they're whipped. They're told how to vote. How can you have scrutiny when people are told how to vote? You cannot have proper scrutiny when that happens. You know very well why this council moved to be, go to a cabinet and strong leader <coughs> model. It's because the county as a whole and all the districts within it, although, as you've mentioned, we're a little bit suspect now of the ulterior motives behind this, are moving possibly to a devolution deal. One of the re recommendations and one of the requirements of the government are, which is why the County Council have moved to the Cabinet System and Strong Leader model, is that the government won't even look at an application for a devolution deal unless you've got an executive elected mayor or a cabinet with a strong leader. So that's why we've moved to it, to be in line Correct. with every single other authority in this county. Straightforward as that. It's not taking our eye off the ball at all and to, to be quite frank I don't see why us members of the ruling alliance should take any lessons from a conservative politician at all about being dysfunctional you know members over there that support a crook of a prime minister members over there that support a chance of the exchequer who until recently had a US green card while the rest of us have been denied living and working in 27 European countries, and a, a chance the exchequer who has a wife that uh, is a non-dom, and until very recently, until pressurised, didn't pay tax in this country. And Nadine Doris, the culture secretary, whose only contribution to culture, and own, his only contribution... Just a minute. Constitution, Mr. Mayor. I'm answering your points. You raised them. And I was told to, to, to not make those points. Oh, okay. Thank you. Can I carry on, Mr. Mayor? And just keep it to the agenda, uh, Councillor Carr. I just want wait one more point. Nadine, because, it, because it's funny. Nadine Doris. Nadine Doris, whose contribution as the Secretary of State for Culture is eating various parts of a kangaroo and I'm a celebrity, get me out. Point of order, Mr Mayor. I am not, I am not, I am not taking any lessons from members of the Conservative Party. Full stop. Thank you. Councillor Carr, if we, if we can. And can, we have less of the argy-bargy here. 
if a, a member, whoever it is, is speaking, then the rest of every, everyone else needs to keep quiet. Doesn't matter who's speaking. Thank you. Right, we go to the vote. All those in favour, please. All those against? Fifteen. Fifteen. Uh, any abstentions? It's carried twenty-three. Fifteen and one abstention. Thank you very much, Carrie. We're on to item nine. An appointment to Cabinet, uh, Councillor uh, Rudovic, uh, can you provide for information, please? Thank you very much. Uh, Mr Mayor, it gives me great pleasure to move item 9. Uh, the schedule is laid out before all members tonight. And then I thank everybody for their help and support and participation. And perhaps if, if Richard, if you could just let me know whether or not you intend to take the uh, role of vice chair of scrutiny or not. Uh, because if you don't, I'll make an amendment and amend the item 9 accordingly. I'll move the item, Mr Mayor. Thank you very much. And I'll second that, Mr Mayor. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes. Yeah, that's just noted, obviously. Uh, we're on to item uh, item 9. Appointments uh, to committees. Do I have a proposer, please? And then a seconder, please. Uh, Sorry, we've just. Were we going to jump? No, you're on nine. This is what I've been given. Yes, vote on committees. Ask for them to vote on the appointments. We've okay. had Councillor Rizulovic. He's done his proposal. Yeah. Had, yeah. We had the seconder. Yeah. Who seconded? Yeah. When council he's got nothing else to say. Right? Who put the second? Who put the second? So councillor Councillor Carr. Councillor Carr. Yeah. So then it's going to be to speak. Yeah. I don't know to speak. Okay. Uh council uh, leader of council, uh, would you like to uh, speak? Chair and are we on item ten? No, we're on item nine. I'm only, uh, excuse me, I'm going by what I've been given to go by. So we've done that. Appointment to committee has gone round. So number eight. Yeah. Number so now we're on. We've done the appointment to committee yes. and we've done the vote routine. Yeah. That. That's what so we've it's item 10. Yeah. 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 So we're now on 10. Well. I've got two sheets here that are telling me different. They're on ten now. So the last one was. No, I went by the sheet by the number. Yeah, that's okay. And this one is points to committees. Okay. Which means there's a very fine point. Yeah, okay. Jump it, jump it back. So we've had the appointments to cabinet. That's right. Yeah, and that's what we've just done. So this, this is, is appointment to committees, which has been circulated. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so do we have a proposal? So we're asking Councillor yeah. um, Dolovic to make his proposal for appointment yeah. to committees, yeah. which has been circulated to members. Uh, thank you very much, everybody. Quiet down, please. Thank you very much. Well, right, so we won't be getting on till midnight. Um, appointment, appointments to committees and... Um, just been circulated. Just been circulated, as everyone Chair, knows. The, the papers have been circulated of all committee memberships, and having had no indication that they wish to rescind their position as vice chair, I move the, the paper laid before us uh, as laid out tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Just have a second. Yeah, I got a seconder, please. Uh, Got it as a seconder. It's got it as a seconder on here. If it's a noting report, it's going to to go through. I'll second. Yeah. I'll second that. Okay. And then for now, move on. 
also point representations on it. Excuse me, can we have less noise over there while we're trying to sort a little problem out here? Thank you. If you're going to continue, I'm going to get angry and I don't want to do that. Representation of outside bodies. Do we have a proposal? Again, you've had it so far. Uh, Mr. Mayor, representation of outside bodies scheduled is laid out before all members tonight. Thank you. Uh, including members of all political groups and parties to enable us to uh, ensure that fair representation is made wherever possible. Thank you very much. Second. Well, well, thank you. Again, it's yes, thank you. We can move. Noted, uh, and we can move on. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Community government uh, review. Yeah. Do we have a proposer? Thanks, Carr. Yes. Uh, thank you, Chair. The community government review was started in June 2020. We appointed a, a task and finish group that met on many occasions and. Uh, it was very congenial and uh, we uh, came up with several ideas. What became apparent during it, though, uh, was the problems with regards to parishes north of the A610, which is extremely complicated. And we took the decision at the task and finish group that we would forward uh, to this council recommendations for areas south of the A610, which you've got before you tonight, and we would actually start the process again for the north of the borough, north of the A610, um, either in September or October this year by formation of another task and finish group, although there might be another way to do it under the new structure. And um, it, 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 whatever you do in the north of the borough, if you take an area off one council and give it to another because it makes geographical sense, the effect it has on the finances of those parish councillors can be very positive or <laughs> very negative, on the other hand. And I think it's important that we get this right. And to enable to get that right, I think we need to be looking at this again, uh, with uh, possibly with fresh pairs of eyes, uh, to ensure that we don't actually make a mistake with regards to the corporate governance of, of, let's face it, Kimberley, Nuttall, Greasley, Eastwood, and Brinsley, which is fairly is a straightforward uh, one anyway. Uh, so um, I would uh, propose that uh, we move forward in accepting the, the review for the <coughs> south of the borough, south of the A610. Thank you. Um, and... Um Councillor Rudevich, would you like to um, back in that? Thank you. Councillor Melcrow, please. Thank you, uh, Mr Mayor. Yes, um, certainly on behalf of the residents of Kimberley, I, I welcome this and will support it. Um, you make the point about south of the A610, but the reality is there are far more parished areas in the north of the borough, of course, than there are in the south, um, which is why there has been the suggestion, certainly from Kimberley Town Council, of this going to review and actually I, I would slightly disagree it isn't just as, as you say about the money some of what was being proposed made absolutely no geographical sense and if you look at it that is why certain parishes were quite up in arms and certain residents as well felt very strongly about that and, and ultimately we welcome this and hopefully that consultation with the parished areas will continue when you undertake your review thank you uh, councillor owen please Yes, thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Councillor Gould and myself were part of the task and finish group. There was a lot of task, but unfortunately, I don't really think we finished. And I'm very disappointed that after all the time and effort that we put into that working group, uh, we've reached this stage. We'll obviously, as Councillor Crow said tonight, be supporting the recommendation. But I do think it's important that we get on and sort out the boundaries in the north of the borough they simply do not make any sense whatsoever you can walk down one road in Nuttall and part of it's in one parish and part of it's in another parish and yet the postal code is all Nuttall and people when you ask them well we live in Nuttall no you don't 
No, you don't. And this is just a nonsense. It's got to be sorted. And I'm afraid it's going to take some bold decision-making. And uh, the, the real issue this time was that when we put out the initial consultations, there was only one parish that came back and said, no, we're not particularly happy with that. Uh, this is what we are suggesting. The others didn't bother. And it wasn't until we'd reached the second stage when we said, these are the proposals that we are going to recommend. What do you think? That then town and parish councils came back with their own uh, suggestions, which in a way uh, put us back to square one. I, I would re remind members of council that uh, the borough council does have the power to recommend creations of parishes and parish councils, but it also has the power to recommend closure of parishes. And uh, I think going forward, that is something that really seriously needs to be considered if we're to get the boundaries sorted so that they make geographic sense, so that people are represented by parish and town councils in the communities that they not only live, but know they live. So it is a big task, but I hope we can get started on that again. And I would suggest going forward that the task and finish group, because we've now got so much experience and we know what the issues are, that that might still be the better way forward than, start, than a group of people starting from scratch. Thank you, Councillor Owen. Councillor Lydia Ball. Lydia Ball, Councillor Lydia Ball, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Oh, and uh, by the way, congratulations on being made the mayor. I thank you. Um, I'd just like to talk about Allsworth, if I may. Um, I'm really pleased that um, Gin Close Way uh, has been telling it looks as if it's going into the parish of Allsworth. Um, I, for those of you that don't know, uh, when you come off the A610, and you do a left turn and you come up to Allsworth, and it was always a lovely road. There used to be... Um, um, a vehicle depot there. It was all surrounded by trees and hedges. It was a really nice green way into our village and Cossel village. Anyway, suddenly one day, some, my phone never stopped ringing and people were saying they're chopping the trees down, down Jean Close Way. So I had, went down there, of course, to try and stop them, which actually wasn't a very sensible thing to do as I got cleared off. But the point is, those parts of Jim Close Way were not in our village. So therefore, when there was any development or somebody wanted to start a new business, which we won't talk about, um, we never had any say in it because the plans were sent to Kimberley or to Greasley. And, you know, at the end of the day, we desperately would love to have that road coming up to Orsworth looking green and tidy and a welcome to everybody. So I'm really pleased about that. <coughs> but then I have to say that Allsworth Parish Council aren't too happy about losing the glebe because of losing some of their precept. And that's only because we have two very big recreation grounds to maintain. And I think you all know how expensive it is to maintain recreation grounds and keep them safe and buy new equipment and all that. So sometimes it's all swings and got, uh, roundabouts. But the fact that I have just have to go back and say thank you for doing Close Way and uh, we'll make sure that it's looked after and there will be a massive improvement. Fingers crossed. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Ball. Okay. Councillor Janet Jackson. Councillor yes. <laughs> <laughs> Patrick. Pa Councillor Patrick. Alive in the place of a bit. I was on the task and finish group on the parish councils. It was very difficult, particularly for some of us that didn't know it as well as the people in the north did. And we spent a lot, it was exactly as Philip Owen said, and how difficult it is to getting responses. If we're to, um, I think we're. We also put off some decisions because we saw it was so difficult. But I would ask that if we are to continue, the, the group that were dealing with it, I believe, were competent to carry on and that not to have a new group. Thank you very much, Councillor Patrick. Councillor Carr. 
Yeah, uh, thank you. Uh, Councillor Clare, you, you are correct um, in what you say, and yes, <coughs> it's absolutely vital that we have um, early consultation, I think, with the, uh, the parish councils. I, I think just leaving it to chance last time, and, and as Councillor Owen pointed out, only one actually put forward suggestions until we came up with a with a, a, a blueprint um actually probably has been one of the main causes why this has gone on as long as it has of course what then it meant was that, um, that people came with all these different uh, scenarios and all these different boundary changes and it didn't leave us any time to go to consultation before this meeting uh, so which is why we're in this situation is I, I hear what people are saying about keeping the same people uh, on the committee and uh, I will I will agree with that even though I said perhaps some fresh out fresh eyes but I, I don't think I think on, in hindsight I don't think we've got time for fresh eyes uh, it's such a big big job uh, with regards to Allsworth I'm glad you, you're happy about that um, of course the the glebe um, if the glebe had been taken into Allsworth, that would have meant that Cossel, the parish council, wouldn't have been able to function. Uh, and also, Cossel Parish Council uh, did a, um, a, a survey uh, there, and I understand that 80% of the people in that area responded to it, and of those 80%, 100% of the people said that they wanted to remain in Cossel. So we have to listen to those in the same way that we listen to the people in Babington Village who didn't want, didn't want to be part of Allsworth but wanted to remain in Kimberley even though they have to go to, through Allsworth to get to Kimberley to vote, I understand, but that's what they wanted. So that, that, that's fair enough. Um, but all these things will be taken into account. It's going to be a, a huge task, but it's one I think that we're going to have to grasp the nettle of before this particular council uh, goes to elections in 2023. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Willemot, I'm going to allow you to speak because I uh, Thank you, Mr Mayor, and congratulations on your appointment. Thank you very much. Um, I'd like to make one point about this exercise, which I did make in writing at the time, but uh, I'm representing here at Greasy Parish Council. I've just taken over the chairmanship of that council. Um, if we, we own a sports and community centre, which most people understand, we've invested £150,000 in it of our own money, saved over a six-year period, plus money we got from Nottinghamshire County Council. If we'd have wanted to stick another story on that, we put in a planning application. And the planning application would be considered by the planning committee, assuming it was called in. And we would be allowed to come and address the planning committee and express why we were trying to achieve that particular objective. Now, I can't see the difference between that and you or any other organisation trying to fundamentally change our parish boundaries, which the initial consultation that was put out would have had a very dramatic effect on our finances. But we were given no, no opportunity, as we would for a planning application, to come and address this task and finish group or any other group for that matter and, and, and put out a case so that some of those people who are um, uh, from other parts of the borough and don't know our part of the borough very well, we could brief them. So that's a point I'd like to make. If we're going to go this round again, we would really like the opportunity to address the committee and explain the situation. But we're not given that opportunity. That's all I want to make. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Willemot. Yeah, thank you. Uh, my understanding is, and the understanding of the task and finish group is that all of the parishes, uh, the town and parish clerks, were we're notified sure. of, of this review, which is actually a, a, a legal matter. The corporate, corporate bunch review is something there's a borough council we have to do every so often legally. Um, uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry that you feel like that, Councillor William Ott, but. Councillor, you know, we, we did have lots of submissions from parish councils, Orsworth, Cossel, Nuttall, Kimberley, Eastwood, and eventually we had them from Greasley. But you, the, right from the start, parish council were given the opportunity to let us know um, what their thoughts were. And I can say, and I, I'm, I'm sure that um, 
Councillor Gordon, Councillor Owen will agree with this, we considered those very, very seriously. And we will continue to consider submissions to us very, very seriously. I, if, if you want to come and address us personally, um, now that it's easier to do that, I, I've got no problem uh, with you doing that. But obviously we'll have to offer the same uh, to all the other uh, parish and town councils in the north of the borough, which I don't think will be a problem. Um, but uh, no, that's fine. But at the end of the day, we still need something in writing because this is a, a, a legal duty. And so we have to have an audit trail so that if we have to justify why we've done something, that we have actually can actually produce the evidence to justify why we've done it. So by all means, come and talk to us, but we will need a submission in writing as well. Well, we did submit in writing. <laughs> well, 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 I know you did, but, but it was too late, as what I've said. Sorry, it came in. Just a minute, just a minute. Councillor, uh, Councillor, if you have a problem, um, please sort this yeah. out after the meeting. Yeah. As I, as I and mentioned... Get, and get sorry, the correct sorry. information yeah. from Councillor Carr, please. Yeah. Thank you. As I, I've already mentioned, Chair, that some councils, and I won't, I won't name them, but some council, parishes and towns in the north were late with their submissions, which meant that we, we would have had to have gone to consultation again because they were fundamentally different to what we'd put out or what the uh, Councillor Williamson's committee had passed as a, as a blueprint and we just hadn't got the time to do a consultation before this meeting which is why they were having to do those parishes and towns separately now again. Thank you. Thank you. It's a cell phone in and as laid out. So um, Unless everyone else has been moved, moved to the vote. Okay. Uh, I'll move to the vote. All those in favour, please. I think we're unanimous. Unanimous. Thank you very much. Thank Items carried. So that's, item carried yeah, yeah, yeah. that's been carried, and I duly conclude that this meeting is well and truly over. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen.